grow it and how to use it for your business. And today I have here an expert to talk about this. I have here David Vidalis from davidvidalis.com. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being here. All right, let's talk a little about you because maybe there is someone in my audience who doesn't know you and uh, I'd like you to give an introduction about yourself, what you do and um, how, do, how you reached having a Facebook group that is a big Facebook group. Yeah, sure. So I am uh, born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, I actually grew up in a, in a kind of like a co-living uh, space. So we were, it was like a big house. We had like separate apartments, you know. Uh, but every night we met everyone, at, you know, at the, um, uh, like a big, uh, big place to eat together, right? So it was really like a huge co-living. So this idea of being part of a community, it started very early for me. It's something that is very natural for me. You know? mm -hmm. uh, it took it took me actually many years until I realized that that wasn't the the normal way of living. You know, knowing all your neighbors like that. So, but it's just something that that has always been a part of me. And then uh, when I was growing up in my teens, I really enjoyed uh, video games actually. So, but I didn't have anyone to play with uh, my favorite video games. So I decided to start like the biggest community here in Sweden around my favorite video game. Hmm. So that's a whole adventure in itself. But basically we went all over the country to buy different arcade machines and, and uh, we built the whole thing up here in Stockholm. So it's not something that I'm a part of these days but it's a uh, you know there's still hundreds of players still playing you know mm -hmm. so this this whole thing of building communities uh, attracting people around a common interest passion you know it's something that started very early for me and uh, and then eventually I actually moved to South Korea because uh, because of this game you know partly because of it and I started a huge uh, YouTube channel around uh, this game so this was this was before Facebook, you know. I'm I'm quite old, even though it might not look like it. <laughs> so, Welcome so, to the club. Yeah, thanks. Man. So it was just a, a very big adventure for me, and and really that's the first time I I had that that real feeling of being able to serve uh, a lot of people uh, on a massive scale, you know, and and the joy of of just being able to to really help a lot of people, you know. So when I came back from South Korea, um, I decided that I wanted to start my own business and I wanted to help people uh, have that experience, right, of being able to help people with your passion, you know, because I felt I, I had been so lucky to, to, to go through this myself, you know. So at that time, I didn't quite understand how important it is to gather uh, you know leads prospects, you know, this was so new to me I, I was struggling with my own kind of like understanding the tech and, and all you know all sorts of stuff uh, Just trying to understand what a funnel was, you know, and uh, And then I got in touch with a, a guy that was teaching people how to build tribes right. and it just uh, And you know it had been a couple of years from when I was living in Korea So it was just such a big thing for me to relive again, you know and that's when I got connected again with this uh, passion of mine of building communities. And I figured that, wow, if I can take all that experience that I thought had been like a waste of my time pretty much because it, it didn't lead to any income for me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can use that in my business, uh, then uh, that's a match made in heaven for me, you know. So I just joined his program and, and uh, yeah, he basically just uh, taught me so much about building tribes. but. You know, building a tribe, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to build a community. So, uh, yeah, so I just got off, started on that adventure, started my group. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, I actually have, like, two, two big groups with a couple of thousand uh, uh, members that have grown uh, uh, the, the, the past year, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and just it has also become a part of what I teach my students and, and help people with because... A lot of people do struggle with how to gather their audience. So yeah, that, that's my that's my background. And do you think that it's it's the same principle to create a tribe with any other tool in any other situation? Is the same thing of creating a, a group on Facebook? You have to use the same techniques of creating a tribe and creating a group. I think uh, 
so you're basically asking, is it the same on, for instance, YouTube and Facebook? Yeah, is that what yeah. You, uh, I think it's a bit different because when you are on YouTube, uh, the medium doesn't quite allow you to create a, an interconnected uh, community in the same sense. Right. It become it becomes more of a the focus becomes more on you and especially your content, right? So it's more about you producing great content that matches what people are searching for, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, creating a tribe or a community on Facebook, it's a bit different because the, the, the main thing you're offering isn't actually your content or yourself, but you're actually offering the other members. So you're offering members to other members. Right. That, that's, the ma that's the magic of it, that you can create value out of thin air because mm -hmm. you're basically lever leveraging connections, right? So you're telling people, enter this space because we have thousands of, or hundreds of people that are into this course topic. So, so here you can get the encouragement and the social environment you need to, to really reach your goals, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's less of an emphasis on you as, the, as the, the one that's pushing out the value. And you can kind of take a, take a seat back. On the other hand, you have to manage it much more. You have to check what people are talking about, that they're not transgressing the lines, all that kind of stuff that is not, you know, if, if people are trash talking in a YouTube comment section, like who cares, you know, but it's not the same in a Facebook group. Yeah. And to add something to it, I, I realized how strong are groups and tribes when I created my first membership website and I was... Uh, I was offering on the side a group on Slack. It's not on Facebook, but it's on Slack. And I realized that a lot of people were getting into the, the membership website, not just for the lessons that I was providing on the membership website, but for the fact that they could access to the, to the group. And in the group, there were all the other members and there were other people who were more expert than you maybe. Uh, you can ask questions to these people, you can help other people. So the the big reason why they wanted to get into the to, into the membership was the community. It wasn't the lessons that I had inside the community inside the membership website. So in that moment, I realized that it's really important to create a community and to give the possibility to someone to access other people that are going toward the same goal. Yeah, I mean it's called social media for a reason. People want to be right. social. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And how did you learn to to work with Facebook groups? Did you learn everything by yourself or through this other expert that who taught you how to create a tribe? Yeah, so it was mainly through this person and um, but it was a lot of experimentation and and uh, what I am doing is more of my own kind of thing and I'm always experimenting testing out. I have a um, uh, playing video games. Uh, it really taught me the 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 benefits of failing forward right so mm. it's all about all about doing your best but failing anyway so if right. you are if you are succeeding it's because you're not trying hard enough so you should always try as hard so you are failing <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. the whole the whole goal is to always fail but you want to fail at your limit right so uh, so i'm a big big fan of uh, uh, experimenting and trying different things and you know and uh, so, so it, when you are in that kind of mode where you are trying different things and so on, you will naturally find your own kind of path and what works best for you, for you and your unique situation, you know. Right. And you said, when did you start to create your first Facebook group? My first Facebook group I, was about a year and a half ago. And I grew it to about 2,000 members in six months. That's impressive. And, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I had a bit of a push there because I was um, uh, because of the leverage I had from my YouTube channel. Although right. I hadn't talked, I hadn't talked with people for years and years, you know. But some of them still remembered who I was. So mm -hmm. I kind of started this group and and uh, I upload. I updated my YouTube channel for the first time in like five, six years, and <laughs> I guess people were quite surprised to to see that. But basically, just told everyone to to go to my my new group so, right. so that was more of a that was more a test experience and then i i started from scratch with the with my business you know helping course creators mm -hmm. so before getting into what you have to do to grow your uh, your group all the all the techniques that you can use to grow members in your group how can we find the right niche for uh, for a group that we want to start it has to be about our passion our hobby or our 
I don't know our job, what what's uh, about our company or about the project we are landing right now, or uh, it can be about something else. What is your yeah. uh, your advice on that? So my advice is that uh, we are all different. We come into this for different reasons. Some people want to do it because they have something that they love to do and they want to work with that, their passion, you know. Other people uh, know that they really want to help a certain type of people, right? They really know that they want to help aspiring authors, uh, but mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter how they help them. So it, it's not, you know, so the important thing is who they're helping. And yet other people are looking for more for the result, kind of like, I want to I want to do this because I want to make a lot of money or I mm-hmm. want to do this because I want uh, them to make a lot of money. Right. You know? So so there's so I think there's like these three different components. The, the what, what is it that, you know, that the, who do you help? What problem do you solve and what is the result? And uh, depending on how you are as a person, uh, different things will will match differently for you. So for me, when I try to figure out uh, what, what problem do I want to solve? Then it didn't really work for me. But when I only thought about who do I want to help, like wh- who is it that I want to work with, and who in my daily life having these conversations over and over again, uh, then uh, I understood that I wanted to help course creators. Right. So, so I really think uh, there's not a single way for you to find your niche. Uh, what I really believe in is to basically try a lot of different things as fast as possible. Just ex- mm. again, experiment, and you will find your way. You know, that's kind of like uh, that's the advantage of being old, right? That you have had a lot of time <laughs> to to test what you like and don't like. Right. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. I remember that in my first business, I had an interview with the guy who created Nerd Fitness. I don't know if you know the um, the website. It's basically a website for fitness, about fitness for nerds, for people that are, uh, they like to play video games and uh, be in front of the computer or like Star Wars and these kind of things. And he created an entire website around the fact that learning something is like playing a video game. You, in the video game, you are not, you don't get re- uh, you don't get sick of the video game because you, you can fail, but then you start again and uh, the difficulty is always calibrated on you. It's not always too difficult. It's always the right difficulty for you. And I think that with everything that you have to learn, even Facebook group, if you want to create a group, is the same. You have to try and try and fail and try again. And then in the process, you learn something new and then you're going you're gonna to know how to do it. You're going to learn how to do it. And for you, it was exactly the same. So let's get into the into the, the how to, to grow your group and how to get more members in your group. What do you okay. suggest to do? Okay, so um, what I suggest first is that you have a mission. You, ha- you have to have a mission in your life, right? Because if you don't have a, you know, you can call it a niche, you can call it a calling, a purpose, whatever you call it, right? But it's basically, it has to be crystal clear for you who you help, what you help them with, and what they get out of it. When once you have that mission, you also have your motivation, right? If mm-hmm. you if you commit to it. Now, now what you can do when you have your mission is that you can extend it. So instead of you saying, uh, "I help copywriters uh, land their first uh, jobs so they can uh, run their dream business," then you extend it from yourself to a general audience. So instead of you saying, "I help." copywriters do this, this, and this, so they can get that, that, and that, you can say, uh, this is a group for copywriters that want this, this, and this, so we can get that, that, and that. Right. So it's basically, you you take your mission, and then you you open it up, so for everyone. So that, now you're creating something attractive, because you're probably not going to be the only one that wants to connect with other people around this mission, right? So this cre- this makes you the leader, the, the 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 person that's in front of this mission because you have made it your personal mission, and everyone that wants to join you. So this way you are attracting the right audience for you, right? Because at a certain point you're gonna want to monetize this, right? So mm-hmm. that's the first point. You have a mission, you extend it, and then you create a group around the mission. So the problem that most people do with their groups is that they create a 
they create a group around a topic, for instance. But what is the purpose? What is the mission? Like, what is the goal? If, if it's only about a topic, then uh, there's no urgency. There's, no, there's nothing, right? It's just like it's just like it is for you, right? If you only know what it is you want to do, but you don't know who you want to help and why you want to help them, then you're it's gonna fall flat. So you want to get in this in this mindset right away, and you want to share this mindset, and then you're going to attract people that really, really want to solve this problem because they want to uh, reach this result that you're talking about. So you're creating a purpose-driven environment, right? It's a social environment for people that are committed to reaching the mission. Right. Now, you have to of course convey this. <laughs> right? You can't it can't be fussy, it can't be muddled up or anything like that. So that is why technically speaking, you create a group with a great great name, right? So because when people are searching, you want your group to show up. So it has to be like the right keywords around what people what are these people that are trying to overcome this problem reaching reaching for this result what are they searching for that's what's going to show up right so first it's the name and then it's the banner because the banner is what's uh, what facebook is showing in all the other similar facebook groups so let's say you are creating a group for people that want to become uh, successful youtubers well then you want what would they what would catch their attention, right? What kind of banner would, you know, that's that's your way of drawing people in, right? So um, then uh, you have to decide if you want to do this organically or paid. So you're, that's those are basically like two different ways of doing it. Uh, the way I do it is completely organic. And that means that on Facebook, you basically think of your personal profile as your landing page for your group. So when you are connecting with people, when you are becoming friends with people, uh, when if you are friends with someone on Facebook and you write something, that shows up in their feed, right? Of course. So uh, you, there's pretty much no limit to how many friends you can add. So if you go to similar Facebook groups to the one you have, and basically just start connecting with people and becoming right. a, a, a figure there, and then you just post something on your profile when you have 5,000 5, friends, that shows up to a lot of people. Right. So what you want then is you want to think of your, your personal profile as your landing page. So a lot of these people are going to go to your profile. So on your you know, Facebook cover, you invite people to your group. In your intro, you state your mission, invite people to your group. So everything should point to your community all the time. right? Mm -hmm. And the content you put out there, it doesn't even have to invite people to the group it, it's that you know you can pretty much put a, a a funny picture of a cat and that's going to get a lot of likes and engagement which is going to show it to more people and more people are going to go to your profile so this is basically business by attention right mm -hmm. so but of course you can also put up a student testimonial or tell a story about a, a group member you have and naturally lead people to your group with your content right Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of like the organic route, um, that, and that's the first part um, to have a really clear, uh, you know, group purpose, what it's all about, the name, keywords, all that stuff, and then the second major part is creating engagement in the group because the more engagement, the more Facebook advertises your group. So Facebook is always showing this group to in other similar groups. And um, and it's showing it to other people based on how active the group is. And of course, the more active the group is, the more inclined people are to make this a daily dest destination in their lives. It becomes a habit for them after a while to once a day go and check the group. And and the more you know, the more they are interacting with the content, the bigger the chance that when you are posting something, that is going to show as well, right? So it's this kind of like snowball effect. Mm -hmm. So. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really, really good branding based on the clear mission you have. The first thing, create a great funnel, social media funnel, and that includes sending people there from your page and all your other things, if you have a website, a newsletter, whatever it is. And then the second part is uh, knowing how to create great engagement in your group. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, let's talk about the engagement. What you what you're doing right now in your group to create the engagement? Are you creating new posts every single day or, or what? What is the the way you create the engagement between members? That's really interesting. You know, the, this is the major uh, issue people have, right? This is what people are struggling with and they're starting their groups and they're not taking off, right? So um, I did the same thing I did when I was uh, with my YouTube channel and how I built my community, uh, you know. What I did is I basically tried to um, really, really balance how much the group is about me and how much the group is about my members. Right. So remember, people are there because they want to be social, right? That's that's the whole thing, right? So they are there looking for the other members. So uh, there are basically three things that you need to create a highly, highly thriving and uh, engaged community. You have to have a clear mission, right? So that's the first thing. So because if you don't have a clear mission, people are, don't aren't they don't know what the group is about. They don't know what they should talk about anything like that. The second thing is you have to have an open culture. So an open culture means that everyone feels that it's okay to ask stupid questions, uh, you know, uh, ask for help and give their help. Now, mm -hmm. for people to feel that it's okay to, to give their help, uh, you have to show them that you appreciate it, not only that you tolerate it, but that you actually want people to, you know, be there. So I invited a lot of people, yeah. So I invited a lot of people that that were experts uh, the, in the same niche as me, right? Because it's a it's an ecosystem between people that want help and people that want to give help, right? And that's always you know changing depending on the questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. So so it, this is really really about putting your members first and understanding that it doesn't matter how great your value is, how great content you put out, it can never match to the value of a engaged community. Right. right. So all your focus should be on encouraging your members to share their wisdom and to ask their questions, to really encourage. So your job, and that's the third thing, right? The, that there's a committed leader, and that's you. Mm -hmm. So your main objective as the leader is to lead, and that basic, basically means starting interesting conversations. So, so instead of you telling people what it, how it is, like this is how you do it, or this is what's right and this is what's wrong. Instead, you're asking people, like, uh, what is your opinion about this? What advice would you give someone about that? Uh, uh, when it comes to this or this, which one do you think fits you best and why and why not? So you're basically starting a conversation, right? And, and then you're basically taking a step back and just letting people uh, talk. Because when people are talking, that all that gratitude is actually directed towards you as the as the leader, because mm -hmm. you have created you have created a great community. So that means you're a great leader, right? So that's basically right. what's going on. And so all that gratitude goes towards you, even though you're kind of just like taking a step back. So mm -hmm. it's really it's really really interesting how you can actually help people by just shutting up and just like. What do you want to talk about? Okay, you know, go for it. And then people are like, yeah, great group. <laughs> you know, and you didn't do anything. That's amazing. So, yeah, so it's, it's more like that. That's really interesting because I personally, I don't have a Facebook group, so I'm learning a lot of things from, uh, from this call. And uh, thank you very much because you are delivering a lot of important oh. content. And uh, it's really, it's been really interesting to hear that it's, Having a Facebook group is super, completely different from having a YouTube channel where you are the expert and you have to teach. And this other, this other case instead is you trying to connect people and then you let people talk with each other and learn from each other and help each other. So it's completely different. It's another way of uh, viewing your community. It's really, really interesting. And the other thing that I really like is the fact that you said that it's not a club. It's not something that you create about a single topic. It's about reaching a goal. Your group is about creating something and reach the goal that you want to reach. It's not just, uh, let's talk about cats. It's not about this. It's about reaching a goal. And this is uh, this is really interesting. And uh, actually, I never thought about this. This is really, really interesting. And you said that, okay, you are the person, the leader who created the group and uh, allowed this connection between people. 
So you are the leader of this group. So you are creating Facebook groups to to establish yourself as a leader in your niche or um, I mean, what is the reason behind creating a Facebook group is is about you is about establishing your uh, your expertise or it's about making it profitable in uh, in any other way. OK, so first uh, I would like to say that there is a huge overlap between having a great, com you know, YouTube community and, and having a group, you know, there there is a lot of overlap. But yeah, as you're saying, people don't go to your YouTube channel to to talk with the other people in the comments, right? They go there because they see a great new video or something like that. But uh, still, it's about, you know, providing value and, and all that stuff. Now, uh, there's a big distinction to be made here. And that is that, yes, it is my group, but it's not my community. So it's our okay. community, right? So uh, in one sense, this is a shared space, right? That is not about me selling anything, me you know, doing anything like that. On the other hand, it is my group, right? So it is my group. I'm the group owner, but I'm not a community owner. Right. I'm a community leader. So it's really important to understand that first, because that's another issue a lot of people run into is that they they try to monetize it too early uh, or basically, no, they try to do it the wrong way. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So uh, one of the reasons that we that we make it purpose driven is because we want to monetize it. Right. So we can create it around the topic and it will get a lot of engagement, but it's not going to be easy to monetize it. Right, because mm -hmm. it's packed with people that don't have a clear goal, right? So, but when you've right from the beginning say, this is why we are here, we're trying to achieve this, right? And when everyone is with you on that idea, like, yeah, we're trying to achieve this, then it's not that hard for you to position yourself as an expert and as a leader within that space, telling people, I help people achieve this, right? So, so you just, you have just, brought everyone on this mission right and then you tell people hey i i, I offer uh, help with this this and this and it's all connected to this uh, main thing right so uh, to have a facebook group to have a community to answer your question it's uh, it's a about a lot of different things like it's lead generation right when people are joining your group you can ask them three questions and the third question is uh, what is your email and uh, 40 45 percent will give it to you so that is that means that you can think of a facebook group as the ultimate lead magnet it's just drawing in new leads for you the the first two questions though they are meant for market research because having a facebook group is the ultimate market research tool because everyone is just talking right everyone is just sharing what they're struggling with what they're having problems with what they're striving for where they are and so on and they're doing it in a space that is directly connected to you. So you can go to other Facebook groups and do market research, but it's not as powerful as when you are, uh, you know, driving the conversation in the direction that, that you want, right? So it's lead generation, it's market, market research, it's brand positioning, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they enter this group, it has like thousands of members, and they just see instantly that you're on the cover and you're you're doing like you're running the shots you're calling the shots so they're like okay this is a leader right people follow this person and you know seeing how everyone is responding to you it's kind of like social proof you know <laughs> uh, over the top yeah yeah you know? on steroids so, yeah exactly so it's like ultimate social proof uh, so you can't compare a lead with a lead you have to you have to look at the temperature right if you do an ad on on facebook that's a that's cold traffic right but here you can warm people up over a, a period of time and you know when when we do research we realize that people don't buy from you on the first occasion they run into you or your content right they need like four or five different occasions Right. And that's what a Facebook group allows you to do in a very natural way. Right. Because when you go live, it pops up on their feed. So so it's just it's a it's a positioning tool. Right. For you to um, to become the go to expert within your niche. 
Now, then, of course, it uh, uh, it allows you to do things like this. Like you wouldn't have contacted me about this interview if you didn't see me as an authority within this uh, niche, right? So it just it just opens up a lot of opportunities. People will contact you over and over and over again uh, with offers, and you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to have to say no. But <laughs> you know, one one times out of ten, it's a, it's something great. So well, thank you because if you yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful. You know, so it's instead of you having to chase people, people come to you. Instead of you having to chase opportunities, opportunities come to you, right? Of course. And then, of course, it's the whole uh, funnel thing. You know, there's nothing weird about you going live in Facebook, having a, a webinar, and then at the end of the webinar, selling a, a course, selling an offer, or just asking in the group. Hey everyone! If I created a masterclass about this, or if I created a course, would you be interested? And you know, you're getting validation, pre-sales. People are saying yes, 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 and then you can just message them directly, or just in there in the in the group, send them to a sales page. So this is a this is a sales tool as well. You don't actually sell inside the group aggressively. You don't post the sales uh, page in the group, but you can ask people like. Are you interested in this? Uh, people say yes, 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 and then you say, okay, you can check this out, or, or you can send them to a free training if you think it would be more suitable for them, and so on. Right, really interesting, really great content. Do you leave other people promote on your group or not? Yes, I do that, and that is kind of how I am. Uh, I have taken a quite unique route. Most people don't do that, right? Uh, the way I do it is I, uh, I put a condition on it. And that is that if you're going to promote yourself, then it has to be valuable. It has to be value in the post itself. So, for instance, if you are, say you have a new course about um, how to start your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. If you post in my group and you're like, uh, here are the four or five steps you need to take. And these are the things you need to avoid. And, uh, and uh, this is like the biggest mistake people commit. And if you want to learn more. Uh, you can check out my my sales, uh, you know, my new uh, course. That is fine, you know. And most people do not allow that, and that is one of the major reasons why why uh, I was able to start uh, conversations and generate activity because uh, it a lot of people want to sell, but uh, when they are forced to do it in a valuable way, sure. then people both get the value in the post, and if they want to buy something, you know, they can they can go there, and everyone is grateful for that. And it's even better for your group because uh, that kind of posts create conversation. If someone adds some content and then it adds the call to action, the online course, anyway, is offer. At the end, this this post is going to create conversation. It's going to create some uh, people talking about uh, about the content of the post. So it's even better for your uh, for your group. So why not allowing that? Yeah, exactly. There has to be a balance as well because it can easily become spammy, right? So uh, that is why most people in my group, uh, I think partly out of respect, they only uh, promote themselves uh, on Fridays. We have a, like a promo Friday post, and there you can po you can promote yourself in however you want, right? You don't have to post any valuable content, and uh, and you can basically just kind of hit the pain points and you do your marketing exactly how you wish to. Nice, and uh, I I heard because I'm I don't know anything about that, but I heard about analytics on Facebook groups. Can you use analytics on Facebook groups? So it, that is actually not something I use very much. Uh -huh. It's just um, I basically get more of a feel of uh, how how much people are engaging and so on. Uh, it, it, there's something called group insights. Right. Uh, so that will show you how people are interacting and engaging. But it's just so hard to connect that to anything. It's so random. You don't really know if it was you that did something good or, and so right. on. Uh, what it can really help you with it, um, it can show you who are more uh, engaged, right? And then when people are very engaged, you can go there, you can see that, you can start talking with them and, you know, encourage them and thank them because they are uh, adding value to the group and, and uh, uh, build those close uh, connections, right? That is also something that that's a huge benefit of having a group is that it's it creates all these you know social connections for you right you are you become so connected so fast 
uh, when you have something like this. Definitely. All right. So uh, everything you talked about was uh, was incredible. It's uh, it's a lot of content. And uh, before we wrap it up, uh, wrap it up this episode. Do you want to give any last advice on someone who wants to create right now a Facebook group from scratch? So yeah, um, we started this conversation talking about the the importance of experimentation, and I think a lot of people. There's actually two things, if if you will allow me. So the first thing is that uh, people think that they have to uh, prepare a lot of stuff before they create the group. Uh, you don't need to just create a group. Uh, you know, I started my group, calling it the online revolution. And then you know, as the days pass by, I understood that okay, this is the mission I want to have. I want to help online course creators. Okay, so we niche down on that. Everything you do with a group, you can always change it later, and and you know you don't have to worry that you're leaving a bad impression on people. The the founding members, you know, they are just gonna be happy that they uh, can see the whole journey and see how everything is growing. So just start your group immediately. You know, go to Facebook, click create, create group, and then uh, yeah, just get all. You know, once you have a group, it's gonna force you to want to mm. optimize it and and work on it. Uh, the second thing is, um, mm, yeah, my I have a bad memory. I'm I'm old, you know. So <laughs> so I, I think I forgot. You're talking too much about this thing about being old, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's terrible to hear from me as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just create create your group before you before you get too and old. There is something. Uh, just if I if I interrupt you for uh, for a single second. Um, there is something I, I never thought of that you said before. I think it's a great advice, like create all the assets for your group, like the banner on top or uh, any kind of image with your, uh, with your, with your face, with uh, you recognizable on the banner, for example, so they know that the group, you are the owner of the group and you are uh, the one who created the group. And um, so I wanted to ask you another question on this, like, do you have to add any I don't know, link to something else to any content that is external to the group in the in all of, in any of this uh, of this asset, like in the banner or. Um... Uh, well, you don't have to, but I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Like, remember, a lot of people will enter your group and then they will be like, oh, OK, cool. Now I'm going to get on with my life, you know, because they're right. They, you know, they they joined it when they have had five minutes, you know, so. The first thing you want to do when people enter your group is that you want to get them on a direct marketing channel. So that means your email list or your right. messen messenger bot. But if you just ask people to like get on my email list or my messenger bot, that's not very attractive, right? So basically uh, what I do is in all my welcome messages and in my Facebook banner, I, I offer something, you know? So basically get started here and there's a, something that looks like a button, or here's your free starter guide, or you can subscribe to all the free resources, get access, and, and that leads them to my messenger bot. Mm -hmm. Nice, and as you said before, for the people that are listening and watching this, uh, this episode, just start. If you want to create a group, just start, and then you will learn little by little. You don't have to have everything perfect before creating a group. That's, uh, I think, an advice that can cover anything that you want to create online. If you want to create a blog or a YouTube channel or a Facebook group, it's, a, it's an advice that is good for any kind of platform. All right, David, thank you very much for all the content that you delivered today. It was really an amazing episode. And uh, I put the link to your website on, uh, on, this, uh, on the screen. But if you want to give any other link, any other way to reach you for the people that are watching, go on. Yeah, I would, I would actually much prefer if you uh, sent it to my group. So right. if, you could put the, if you put that link instead, instead mm -hmm. of my website, I am uh, more than happy with that. Uh, so people can see what we have been talking about the whole episode. You know, so. Yeah, it's going to be in the description for sure. There is one mm -hmm. thing actually, like a link for a group is uh, kind of uh, difficult to remember. Yeah, Do so you... I have a, a group.onlinecoursecrets.com. All right. Okay, cool. I'm going to put it in the description as well. Perfect. Great. So thank you again, David. And uh, for the people that are watching this episode, if you liked it as much as I liked it, 
share it everywhere you want on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. And David, thanks again, and I hope to have you on board for uh, for another episode in the future. Yeah, thank you. I would uh, love that. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you.